Hey everyone, before we go into this first look and little interview about Rove, I wanted to disclose my relationship with Alex Games. As you may know, they were the guys who actually bought me over two packs. So without them, I would not have actually been at Packs Unplugged. I helped them during the convention, as well as I have a personal relationship with Motti the designer, because of course he designed Crimson Scales and we've been playing a lot of Crimson Scales on the channel and he's done some giveaways with the channel and stuff like that as well over time. So we do have a bit of a relationship. So I wanted to kind of disclose that initially so you know where this is coming from. And I want to be completely upfront with you guys about my relationship with uh, with Motti and with Alex Games. So without further ado, let's get in to Rove. Hey everyone, I'm here with Motti, the uh, owner of Alex Games and also the designer of uh, Rove, a game that uh, I've been quite excited to play and we've been talking about a bit on the channel before and we've done some giveaways on the channel before. So Motti, you want to take it away and, and introduce yourself? Um, sure, yeah. yeah. Thank you for the opportunity. Uh, my name is Motti. I started Alex Games um, about a year ago and we started working on Rove. Um, this is our premier flagship game that is coming to crowdfunding in uh, just a few months. So some people may be aware of you from some of your previous sort of things. So do you want to explain sort of what you've been working on sort of up to now in terms of, you know, Crimson Scales and stuff like sure. that so people kind of know your experience? Yeah. Um, before starting working on Rove, um, as a huge Gloomhaven fan, I started um, the Crimson Scales, which is a fan-made expansion for Gloomhaven with um, over... You know, combined with the expansions for Crimson Scales has a total of 19 classes with some guest contributors, um, 95 scenarios, and you know, just tons of content to expand on the Gloomhaven adventure. Perfect. And uh, so, so Rove, um, tell us a little bit about Rove. So this is your kind of new, your brand new kind of game idea that you've yeah. kind of, you've kind of have. So you know, tell us a little bit about like the world of Rove. Sure, absolutely. Yeah, Rove is a very exciting project for me because I can, um, everything I like about tabletop gaming, dungeon crawler, um, I can sort of instill my creativity in every single aspect and design it the, the way I think would be optimal uh, play experience. Everything from, you know, setting up, ease of setup to how um, characters are developed and how the enemy system works and everything. So Rove is a co-op dungeon crawler for one to four players. It's a strategy game. It's campaign. So you're going to have a class, um, and then you're going to grow along with your class, level up, kill baddies, you know, the, the typical dungeon crawler experience. Mm -hmm. But we have a very unique world um, where it's you're out in the wild, it's, it's less civilized, um, there's crazy different creatures that, you know, clans have to group together and to survive uh, in the world, survival of the fittest, so to speak, where you never know what's lurking around the corner. Mm. And you don't have the safety of large civilizations to protect you. You know, as a rover, you're adventuring out, you're going out into the world and exploring. Mm -hmm. um, so we have a unique, very unique and very big emphasis on the thematics, as well as some very engaging mechanics, you know, how the, we're card-driven combat with flip system mm -hmm. and how the enemies um, work. And we have, we put a lot, a lot of thought into just developing the, the foundation and the mechanical premise of Rove uh, to make it as smooth as possible. Yeah, so like I think a lot of people will be drawn to immediately is is the artwork and the kind of design of of Rove. Um, you know, can you tell us a little bit more about like that kind of element because it's a very striking kind of art style that you guys and kind of world that you've kind of created here. Right. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. It's it's wild, so to speak. You know, yeah. you see representations of different biomes, different um, um, different color palettes depending on where you are in the world. Um, it's it is more colorful compared to most dungeon crawlers um, but that's just the vibrancy of the world you know it's it's expressed through this art we're working with alexander elikev he's the he worked on the art for crimson scales and gloomhaven and we had a really great experience working together with him on crimson scale so he joined on board and um, we have tim doing the graphics he's he's just amazing you know and we we're really putting a lot of emphasis too on making it look um, as nice as possible because to me part of the play experience isn't just moving around the board it's also how things look and how things feel. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I think you've done an amazing job just looking at it at the moment. You know, we're looking at like a prototype copy right now, but I mean, the artwork that's already been done is incredibly striking. You know, mm -hmm. and you've got a really great kind of kind of style here. I think. Mm -hmm. uh, in terms of sort of like the gameplay, then, like you know, I think a lot of people will be thinking like you know, so you've worked on kind of Gloomhaven content before. You know, how does this kind of relate? Like, what is what is different with Rove compared to? 
to Gloomhaven or other dungeon crawling kind of games that, that are out there? Yeah, sure. I, I, I'm sure I'll get that question a lot because <laughs> my background is was in designing Gloomhaven content. Yeah. But I think this game has a much in, con uh, in common with Gloomhaven as any other dungeon crawler has in common with Gloomhaven. Um, it has its own unique mechanic system, its own unique thematic system. The elements are, is different the way that those are infused and you interact with them. The way the board is set up and the way you move around the board is different. The action economy is different. Um, cards, you know, in comparing to Gloomhaven, they're not lost or discarded. They're just flipped um, so that way your action pool is ever evolving. Um, and then you use skill points to play more explosive turns and you build them up on softer turns. Um, the enemy action system is unique in um, its conditional checks um, between four different action tiers. Um, we have our own unique status effects as well. Um, but if you do like the experience of moving around, leveling up, growing attached to your character, getting items, uh, following a branching story path, and that's the experience we provide. So in terms of the characters then, uh, how, how do you kind of progress those characters? What's kind of the process of like leveling up a character, if you like? Like how do we kind of customize our characters? Sure. So each character, and I know when I play games, I grow really attached to the characters. And so the way Rove is designed is once you um, get a character and you, you start the class, you build that class up, you, you start to add traits, new abilities. And then when you move on to the next class, it's an evolutionized version of your previous class. Um, in the build path that you decide. So if you like a, a certain build or a certain play style of playing that character, you're more likely to lean into that evolution. Mm -hmm. So you actually do go from a base class to an advanced class and then ultimately to the ultimate form of the class, which is the master class. Um, so each campaign you're going to be playing three classes and each class is an evolution of the previous version. Mm. So how, how long roughly is sort of the, the campaign and what you're kind of like shooting for in terms of like kind of story kind of content and mission content in the game sure so it's um, we're aiming for a 50 encounter campaign mm -hmm. however there are branching narrative paths and the way it's structured is if you don't address a certain threat by choosing to go on the other path then by the time you get to that threat it'll have evolved and it'll be a much bigger more dangerous threat so your choices matter in terms of which paths you take because the paths that you don't end up taking are going to evolve and be more serious at a later point Right, okay, so as a group, you're gonna to have to make tough decisions then kind of going forward on which ones you're gonna go for and there will be sort of opportunities to take on different things at different points then. So the scenarios themselves will change depending on like the character's levels or things like that. Exactly, right, and there are gonna be in-game um, choices that you make as well um, and based on your success or failure of certain encounters, that'll impact the storyline as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, in terms of like the uh, the kind of components, so you know we so we got prototype components here today, but you know you've obviously gone for like books and things like that. So talk us a little bit through like kind of your thought process on the components and like when you get a Kickstarter, hopefully what the kind of final components are going to look like for the game. Sure. So it's very important for me uh, as a board game player that I spend the most amount of time playing and the least amount of time setting up and cleaning up. Mm. So we have all the maps are in a book. So you just flip to that page in the encounter. All the enemies are in a book, so you just flip to that encounter page and you don't need to start pulling out different decks of cards to, to build up the encounter. So that way you can spend the most amount of time playing. Um, there's quest cards that you can read throughout each encounter. Mm -hmm. um, and I am aiming to have as many deluxe components available as possible. For example, uh, for a deluxe pledge, instead of these uh, cardboard chips, that plastic chips or wooden chips. and I want to deluxify as many things as I can, um, you know, prioritizing what's used the most in the game, um, so that way the the whole game experience just feels elevated. Yeah, and so is the with the Kickstarter then is the plan to have different versions of the yeah. pledge, or how how are you sort of thinking? I don't want to like force you to make a decision now. <laughs> sure. But, you know, like, what's your kind of thoughts on like what the kind of pledge levels and uh, that you're kind of hoping to, to offer? Sure, yeah, and everything is temporary until we go to crowdfunding, yeah. but um, I'd like to make the game as accessible as possible to people who just want to learn, you know, who, who might be a little bit skeptical about jumping into the world, want to try the game out, or might need a more affordable option. So there's gonna be a $99 version, mm -hmm. which uh, gameplay-wise is the same as um, the deluxe version but the components will be more cardboard and paper versus plastic and other upgrades. And then there's going to be a miniatures version that has miniatures for 
the classes for some bosses via stretch goals, and then upgraded um, components like plastic and wood. You've gone for like a, a kind of a grid-based system as mm -hmm. well, which is kind of different to a lot of games. You know, nowadays you see a lot of games, you know, embracing hexes. Mm -hmm. this, this. So what, what was the kind of the thinking between using kind of like squares rather than using, say, you know, hexagons for, for your maps? Sure. Yeah, we were inspired by many different games mm -hmm. when making this game. Fire Emblem was a big inspiration. Okay. They, um, they use squares as well. And uh, in terms of how you move around and how you interact and the different reach and range of each character, we just felt that moving around on squares versus hexes was a better fit. Great. Well, again, thank you so much for coming over and, you know, inviting me over to come and see you guys and to be able to see Rove. So it looks really impressive. And um, when did you say the Kickstarter was? It's... And a few months from now, which is going to be either February or March is what we're aiming for. So it was originally going to be earlier in, in 2022, mm. um, but we decided to build a bigger audience um, and to get the word out to, to delay it a bit. Mm. Um, however, development has still continued on. So we still do anticipate finishing developing the game in 2023 to deliver in 2024. Perfect, okay. Well, again, thank you so much sure. uh, for showing me the game. And yeah, we'll look forward to seeing more uh, Rove in the future. Thank you. So there we have it, our first look at Rove, a game that is shaping up quite nicely and I do actually now have a physical preview version of those materials that you saw in the interview in hand so my plan is going to be to play some of this on stream as well as make some videos for the YouTube in the coming months as we get closer to the Kickstarter so make sure you go over to twitch.tv slash mandatory quest where you can be notified when I go live with anything to do with Rove or other things and gloomhaven -y things as well of course. A big thank you to all of my supporters over on Patreon. I really appreciate and all of those people who sub over on Twitch, especially to Mike Kira for the Legendary Sport and Truck Driving Gamer. Thank you, guys. You're both awesome. But apart from that, I will catch you guys in the next video. Bye.